Well, yesterday we had our golf uh, tournament or golf outing. Jeff Pollard asked me to come. I'm not a golfer, but he uh, parked me on the 11th tee. He said, you know, that way all groups will see you and, uh, you know, so, so I teed off uh, first with, with every group. He had nine groups of eight come through. It was the most humiliating, humiliating two and a half hours of my life. <laughs> when I say I don't golf, I mean it. The first shot I had went straight up and came down on the women's tee. So that's about 40 feet, 40 yards, I don't know. Second one did about the same, and then I hit a fence. It was, it was sorry, I'll tell you. But anyway, uh, and then they laughed at my clubs. My father uh, was a, a fine golfer, eight, eight handicap, till he was 80, and uh, when he died, he left me clubs and uh, left all our boys sets of clubs, but apparently they were bought around 1980 or pretty old, apparently, so everybody laughed at my clubs. That made it worse. <laughs> but here I am, I've recovered, standing again. So, Jesus was the greatest teacher who ever lived on this earth. Some of the things he said are hard to understand. Most of the things he said are difficult to practice. A few of the things he said are just outright counterintuitive, like, blessed are those who are persecuted. What? How could persecuted people be blessed, truly happy? So let's look at the full uh, text of what he says. Why don't you stand with me in honor of God's word? Is it on the screen? Yes. Okay, let's read it together. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Lord Jesus, you are the greatest teacher we've ever seen on this earth and these are strange words to say, blessed are those who are persecuted. Help us to, <clears throat> to understand what you mean, why we would be blessed if we're persecuted. Our minds are ready uh, to hear uh, what you have to say to us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So Jesus says, persecuted Christ followers can experience God's blessing. Uh, there are lots of ways to be persecuted. A wealthy man had a big party, invited all these people, and they were gathered in his beautiful backyard and eating, and he called them all together, and he had his swimming pool stocked with sharks and alligators. He said, the first young man that swims across this pool, I will give my uh, choice. You can have my Ferrari, or you can have my yacht, or you could have my da daughter's hand in marriage. Well, he'd no longer said that, and, and a young, young guy jumped in the pool and weaved his way through the alligators and sharks and, and got out. And he was so impressed, he went over to him and he said, wow, I've never seen anybody so brave as you. Would you like my Ferrari? I said, no. Would you like my boat? He said, no. And he smiled and he liked my daughter's hand in marriage. He said, nope. He said, well, well what do you want? He says, I want the name of the guy who pushed me in the pool. <laughs> I'd like to ask three questions today. First one is, how are followers of Christ persecuted? I mean, what are we talking about when Jesus said persecuted? Well, let's look at the definition. Christian persecution is any hostility experienced from the world as a result of one's identification as a Christian. It can involve verbal harassment, hostile feelings or words, beatings, physical torture, isolation, rape, severe punishment, imprisonment, slavery, discrimination in education and employment, and even death. Now let's think about what we, we collectively know. Uh, who do you think are the 10 worst countries for persecution in the world? 
Let's just guess, this is from the 2017 World Watch List. Now, to get on this list, you have to have Christian martyrdoms, Christians put to death. 7,000 were put to death around the world last year for their faith. Uh, you have to have church destructions, uh, torture, uh, imprisonments, uh, displacements. One million Christians fled their homes from the, whole, from the Horn of Africa or uh, Middle East over the last couple of years. All right, what do you think? What are some of the worst countries in the world? Just shout them out. North Korea? North Korea? Syria. Syria? Qatar. What? Qatar. Wrong, but it, it, I mean, it's up there somewhere, but it's not in the top 10. We keep coming. Sudan, Iraq, China, Iran. Okay, so let's look at them. So number one is North Korea. Uh, you must worship their leader. 70,000 Christians are in labor camps. Only 1% of the population are Christians. Somalia, only 1%. It's, uh, Islam is the state religion. Uh, people suspected of being Christ followers can be killed on the spot. Afghanistan, only 1% are followers of Christ. Uh, no churches are allowed. Uh, any uh, Christian activity is underground. Uh, Pakistan, 2.8% are Christians. Uh, remember the suicide bomber last Easter? Killed 70 uh, Sudan, as 4.8% are Christians, converting from Islam to Christianity is punishable by death. Uh, Syria, number six, Aleppo's uh, Christian population shrunk from 400,000 to 60,000 over the last two years, uh, and it's down now to 4.9% are Christians. Uh, Iraq, uh, used to be higher on the list uh, like two years ago when ISIS was at its apex of power. Uh, many public executions uh, by ISIS, only 1% now in that country are Christian. Iran, it's on the edge, of, the church is on the edge of extinction, 1%. Uh, Yemen, uh, Al-Qaeda is known to kidnap and kill Christians. And in Libya, uh, Bibles are illegal, evangelism uh, is illegal. Uh, this last year uh, in China, uh, April 22nd, uh, President Xi Jinping called for an initiative for the Communist Party to reassert control over the church. Uh, this takes us back to the Cultural Revolution of the mid-60s when Mao Zedong tried to stamp out the Christian church, um, uh, you know, destroying Bibles, Christian books, uh, killing Christians and putting them in prison. It uh, didn't work. The church just kind of went underground and it grew more rapidly. Well, there's so many Christians in China today that the Communist Party is getting concerned and they want to reassert control. July 8th this year, Vladimir Putin approved an anti-terrorism law that ushers in tighter restrictions on evangelism. No evangelism allowed in Russia outside the church. It's punishable by $780 U.S. or $15,500 for an organization. Even in our own country, where we have freedom of religion, you can feel hostility growing against uh, Christian faith. For example, June 29, 2017, uh, East Central University, Oklahoma, the officials removed crosses, uh, Bibles, and all Christian symbols from their chapel in response to a legal demand letter from the Americans United for... Uh, church, uh, separation of church and state. Um, Joe Kennedy, football coach, Bremerton High School, uh, was suspended for taking a knee for 10 seconds on the 50-yard line. After the game, he took it to court. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said it violates the U.S. Constitution. Now, you can argue about whether the coach needed to take a knee on the 50-yard line. He didn't. But uh, just, it's just an example of the growing hostility in our country towards Christian faith. All right, second question, why? Why does this happen? Why are Christians persecuted? There may be a number of reasons, but I think the number one reason is because of what Christians believe. We believe what Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus taught that he is the only way to life, the only way to God the Father. The apostles taught the same thing. Salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name other than Jesus Christ under heaven given to humankind by which we must be saved. Now, if you're not a Christian, you're saying precisely. That's why I can't stand Christians. They're so self-righteous. 
so intolerant, so arrogant. Now, I'd agree with you that Christians are arrogant if we made up the belief that Jesus is the only way. But if we're simply believing what Jesus taught and the apostles taught, that's actually an act of humility. Not picking and choosing what we believe, actually believing something that's very unpopular in our culture. And we're not intolerant. We believe God loves all people, that Jesus came to die for all people, and we want everyone to know about His love. Now, where this belief that Jesus is the way to God is, is, is taught in Muslim-majority countries, Christians face intense persecution, like Amin Afshar Naderi. He is spending 15 years in prison in Iran because he became a Christian. Uh, ten of the years, uh, and then his activity as a Christian, uh, ten of his years is for his hostility against the state because he was uh, developing underground churches. And five years for blasphemy because he believed that Jesus is the way to God, not Mohammed. He wrote an open letter to the Iranian government. He said, what have I done against you and my country that makes you hate me so much? He said, when I was put in prison, uh, the, I was interrogated, I was slapped, I was insulted, I was tortured, and they made fellow prisoners sign a false statement against me saying that I had insulted their religious beliefs. Now, another reason Christians might be persecuted is because of Satan. Satan hates Jesus Christ. And so he wants to keep everyone in this world from following Jesus Christ and stirs up persecution against followers of Christ to make them want to stop their faith in Christ. Other reasons uh, Christians may be persecuted might be found in these <coughs> verses just before uh, Jesus says, blessed are those that are persecuted. Uh, verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Um, he says, if you're merciful, many times you will be shown mercy in return. When Jory and I moved from Chicago to Portland, the guy that was moving us, uh, Jory made him lunch. And uh, he was, so we sat down, had lunch together. He was so grateful that he said, I'll pack all your pictures for free. Jesus is teaching that when you're merciful to people, it will often come back to you. But sometimes Christians' attempts to be merciful and kind is, is seen as irritating or weak to people, and so we can be persecuted. In verse 8, he teaches, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Heart in the Bible doesn't refer to the muscle that pumps blood, but to our mind, the center of our thinking. Pure in mind means we are more likely to want to stay away from sin, which blocks our view of God. In uh, John 3, Jesus teaches, this is the verdict, light has come into the world. He claimed to be the light, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Now, this was, uh, I got this from our journal this week. I appreciate the, the writers of our journal taking us to different places in the Bible that deal with the same subject as the main text I'm talking about. So Jesus is teaching that when we follow him, we're coming into the light and Everybody is in darkness in this world. We naturally are prone to do evil. And so uh, people may be uh, irritated by those who claim to be following Christ and be coming into the light. And so we become very unpopular and can be persecuted. Uh, the writers of the journal also led us to 2 Timothy 3.12. Apostle Paul says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Just point of fact. Since we don't share the viewpoint that all sin is okay, whatever you do is okay, we are not popular. 
and can face persecution. In verse 9, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus came to make peace between God the Father and us. We're called peacemakers when we make peace between the Father and people or between people. But sometimes our efforts to make peace can be, um, you know, not, not make us popular and we can be persecuted. All right, the final question I want to ask is really the main question of today. In what ways can persecuted Christians be blessed? This is the question I started with. What in the world does he mean, blessed are those who are persecuted? In what ways? Well, let's go through our uh, text, verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, he says, being persecuted is an indication that you really are a follower of Christ, and so it proves that you are part of the kingdom of heaven. You will be going to heaven. You experience heaven in this life, in your life. Verse 11, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. He says, you will be rewarded someday. Things may not go so well for you on this earth, but your reward will be great. Apostle Paul says, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light and momentary troubles. So, if, if you're facing difficult times, maybe persecution, hostility for your faith, see them, Paul says, as light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It will be worth it in the long haul. Jesus says persecuted Christ followers can experience God's blessing. Verse 12, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We're blessed when we're persecuted because we get to identify with Jesus who was persecuted hated. We get to identify with the prophets who endured persecution before us. We get to identify with the martyrs. Ten of the twelve disciples died as martyrs. Secular historians agree that there were ten great attempts to wipe out the church, uh, starting with Nero, Emperor Nero in 64 AD and ending with Diocletian in 314 AD. Believers were fed to wild animals, were tortured, burned at the stake, or crucified. Emperor Diocletian thought he was so successful in getting rid of the church that he had a metal plaque made with these words, the Christian religion is destroyed and the worship of the Roman gods restored. But he was wrong. The church actually grew like it did in China after the Cultural Revolution in the 60s. Persecution actually inspires people to follow Christ and more become believers. Polycarp is one example of a Christian martyr. He died in Smyrna. It's in the Roman province of Asia. It's like Turkey today. In 155 AD. He was uh, discipled by the Apostle John, one of Jesus' uh, disciples. And John said to him in Revelation 2.10, Stand strong to the end. Don't be afraid to suffer persecution. Even to the point of death. And that's exactly what happened to him. He was uh, captured by uh, his persecutors, and uh, rather than running, he fed them a meal. Maybe that's why they granted his last request for one hour of prayer. After he was done praying, some of the, his captures were so impressed that they became believers on the spot, repented of their sins, but they still brought him in. They led him in like Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. And the proconsul said to him, if you give up your faith in Christ, I'll let you go free. All you have to do is defile the Christ. And Polycarp said, 86 years I have served him faithfully. He's never let me down. How can I blaspheme the king who saved me? And so his fate was sealed. He was sent into the Colosseum to be uh, martyred. And the crowd chanted as he came in, feed him to the lions, let the lions loose. But the proconsul chose fire. 
He says, Polycarp has confessed faith in Christ, so he's to be put to death. And so they took his hands to nail him to the stake, and he said, no, Christ, the Christ that will see me through this fire doesn't need your stakes to hold me. And so they let him just stand there, and they lit the pyre, and uh, fire went up all around him. But like, remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He proved to be fireproof, and he uh, didn't get burned at all. And so the crowd was just going crazy, kill him. And so the executioner stabbed him through the fire with a spear, and he bled out. He was faithful, even to the point of death. Now, we may not die a horrible death like Polycarp, but if you are persecuted for your faith in any way, you can know that you're in the company of massive Christian followers of Christ who lived and died courageously before. Persecution causes us to identify with Jesus Christ who was insulted, hated, beaten, and crucified on the cross. Persecuted Christ followers can experience God's blessing. So parents, teach your sons and daughters that they will face persecution for their faith. Do not be surprised when it happens. Teenagers, you go to school, don't be surprised when people uh, despise you for your faith in Christ. Uh, Jamie, when she was a junior and senior at Lincoln High School, stood up for her faith and she said, you know, kids in class would look at her and say, how can you believe that? The Christian faith is so looked down upon. Young married, some of your friends will say, why do you believe that? How can you do that? Young singles, same thing. There are other people will say, why, why would you go to church? Why would you put your faith in that stuff? Pastor Bakadur Jolly Singh of Punjab, India, has been persecuted for his faith. He became a Christian. He grew up in a... Um, a high caste Sikh family, and uh, his father built a temple, uh, and uh, was you know when, we, when he got to junior high, 13 years old, they sent him to a Christian school, and one of the students uh, there asked him, "Jolly, uh, do you uh, know God?" And he said, "God is Wahe Guru. That's the Sikh name for God." And, and the boy said to him, uh, to, to, to get to heaven, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, Jolly just didn't get that. Why a, a person would say his religion wasn't good enough and he'd have to believe in Jesus Christ. So he got his friends together and they, they harassed this boy that had talked to him. And, uh, but the boy said, you know, well, someday you will have to confess Jesus Christ. And his words proved to be prophetic. When uh, Jolly went to college... Uh, the, the Sikh religion was not uh, working for him and, and he just wasn't, you know, fulfilled. And so he got into drugs and it got so bad uh, that he, he finally, you know, said, you know, I can't keep living this way. So he went to a teacher and he said, is there any hope for a guy like me? And the teacher answered, Jesus Christ. He's the hope of the world. Again, uh, Jolly was surprised. You know, why, why does he keep coming back to Jesus Christ? So he asked him, what, what does that mean? And he, and he, 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 he uh, explained to him why, that Jesus came to the world, that he was the Son of God, and he died for everybody's sins so we can be forgiven and have a restored relationship with God. And Jolly went home, and he got on his knees, and he said, God, I'm convinced that, that Jesus is your Son and that you raised him from the dead, would you come into my life and change me? And he had a dramatic transformation. Well, at first, his father didn't think it was any big deal and wasn't too worried about it. But, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks later, his grandmother said to him, let's go uh, worship in the temple. And he knew that he was not supposed to worship false gods. And so he said, I can't go. I've given my life to Christ. Well, grandmother uh, told his father. His father was very angry. And that began a period of time of huge strain with his parents. 
This mother would cry and say, please give up your faith in Jesus. Don't do this. And, and his parents forbade him from going out on Sunday mornings because they knew he wanted to go to church. His father uh, said to him uh, at, at some point, uh, if you don't give up your faith in Jesus, I'm going to kick you out of the house. And, and Jolly says, I can't. I can't, uh, I can't give up Jesus. And so 10 days later, he was kicked out. Uh, he lived with a, a Christian couple. Uh, they took care of him, and then they sent him to a Bible school quite a ways away and, uh, from where his parents lived. And the father uh, found out that, uh, it, and, and, and he threatened to hurt their son if, if, if they didn't tell him where, their, where, where Jolly was. And it, they sent word to Jolly, and so he called his parents and said, hey, please don't threaten my Christian friends. So they tricked him into coming home. Uh, he, he got word that his father had had a heart attack. And he came home and, and they found out he was still a Christian. He had cut his hair. Uh, he no longer wore the turban, the sign of a, a Sikh man's identity. And uh, his father disowned him. And uh, it, it's 16 years ago that he gave his life to Christ. And he hears uh, his parents say that we had three sons but one of them died, and so they, they've disowned him. He's now the pastor of a church a couple hours away from where his parents live. Church is growing. They've planted 20 churches in a 60-mile radius. Uh, all the Christians in his church are first-generation Christians. In other words, they've, they've, they've moved from a Hindu faith or Sikh faith to uh, belief in Jesus, and they all say they've faced physical torture. Um, as a result of being Christian. Many of them have been put in prison. So if you're not a believer today, you say, why would somebody do that? Why would they go through being disowned by their family, being tortured, put in prison, maybe even put to death? Maybe it's because Jesus really is the Son of God. He really was raised from the dead, and I should put my faith in Him. Maybe that's what Jesus meant when He said, blessed are those who are persecuted. Because they have inspired many people to become followers of Christ. And they inspire all of us, don't they? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your teaching. It, it, it again seems so strange to say, blessed are those who are persecuted. But we see that it really is a privilege to have happened to us what happened to you, to be hated and insulted and persecuted. So help us not to uh, be afraid of it. Um, help us to stand strong for you, not trying to avoid any hostility toward us, but to, to speak about our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.